e fata alo fatue pa ia male mamalu ua au fia mai le nei aso matongo fia fa fitai le alo fa le tua o ma feona fa tasi mai le nei aso fa ma alo le so i fu manuia ma alo le langi mo wherever you are on faith's journey wherever you have come from and wherever you are going to whatever you believe and whatever you do not believe you are welcome here. Tēnā koutou katoa mā lōlele, ni hao, bula, namaste. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And we want to welcome you again to our Sunday service, uh, wherever you may be, uh, in Auckland, New Zealand, or around the world. And uh, welcome back, and if this is the first time that you are joining with us uh, during this lockdown down period, uh, welcome to you also. Uh, let us pray. God, our Creator, yours is the morning and yours is the evening. Let Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine forever in our hearts and draw us to that light where you live in radiant glory. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. The Holy Gospel is taken from Mark, chapter 12, verses 38 to 45. Praise, Praise and glory, glory to, God. to God. Jesus denounces the scribes. As he taught, he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and to be greeted with a respect in the marketplaces and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honour at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise Amen. to Christ, Christ the Word. Hi everyone. Two copper coins. What can you buy with 20 cents? Jesus watches as a woman throws two small copper coins into the offering box. And he says, wow, this woman has given more than anyone else. She has given everything she had to live on. And he commends her for it. Now, some would say that it's foolish to give away everything. She could have saved it until there was enough for something to eat. It's strange how those who can least afford to be generous are proportionally the most generous and the more ready to share what little they have. If you had only 20 cents and did not know where your next meal was coming from or even if you would get more, what would you do? Perhaps you would give it away because it wasn't able to be used. Why do we give? Why do we need to give? A wise man said, God does not need your money or your good deeds, but your neighbour does. And who is your neighbour? How hard it is for a rich person to enter the kingdom. It's true that the degree that we allow God access to our wallet is a measure 
of the degree that we allow God access to our heart. In Old Testament law, 10%, the tithe, was what must be given. Jesus demands nothing, but he wants you all. What is it that stops us from giving? Is it fear that there will be not enough? It shouldn't be. In Proverbs 10, there's a promise that the Lord does not let the righteous go hungry. Or is it selfishness? One reason we find it hard to part with our cash. Those of us who work for pay exchange our time for part of our life, for dollars. So in a sense, our money represents our life. Therefore, when we put our money into that offertory plate on Sunday, when it's offered to God on the altar, it is our very lives that are being offered to God. The Christian faith is about commitment. And God requires of us nothing less than 100% commitment. The percent that we give to God, and not just what we put in the offering plate, is a measure of our commitment. That old hymn comes to mind. Love so amazing demands my all. The widow, she gave everything she had. She would trust God to provide for her. So, what do we learn from this story? Well, here's my two cents worth. Attitude. Giving requires attitude, and God loves a cheerful giver. The spirit in which a gift is given is as important as the gift in self. We know from sales experience that there are really only two reasons people part with their money. One is to get pleasure, and the other is to avoid pain. If your gift is from a sense of duty, or is your gift of thanks and appreciation for God's goodness to us? Another point, perspective. The value of a gift is not its monetary value. It's the sacrifice of time, effort, and personal cost to the giver. Don't compare your gift with what others give. The widow's two cents was worth more to God than any of the other gifts. Giving till it hurts. Sacrificial giving is as much an act of worship as is prayer or praise. Promise. There are so many verses on giving that include a promise. Give and it will be given unto you. The measure you give is the measure you will receive. Bring the full tithe into the storehouse and I will pour out a blessing on you. You know, giving is like planting a seed, and what you sow, you reap. And as in this, and as with uh, giving, and and agriculture, there are many days between the sowing and the re reaping. The gift of generously giving is a gift from God, and I pray that as you are blessed with the gifts that God gives you, you will allow these gifts, gifts of time, of talents and of money, to flow through you so that you may be a blessing to others. Amen. Thanks be to God.
Dear Lord, we waited, we hope, we dwell in this place of expectancy, not alone, but with you at our sides. Father, please come and calm our minds and still our thoughts with truth and life. You are all that we need, for here we can lean into you and find rest. Lord, guard our minds, fill them with heavenly hope and our souls with a peace that surpasses understanding. We pray for good news, news that brings release and freedom for us. Yet we know that you are the good news, that in you we have found the greatest treasure, the safest harbour, the most beautiful sanctuary. So we wait, we hope, we dwell with you. Father, we give you thanks for the safe return of Cleo Smith to her family. Amen. Amen. Lord, it disturbs us when we see world leaders embracing division instead of unity, pursuing wealth instead of justice, and concealing lies instead of speaking out the truth. We lift all those in significant leadership to you. We give thanks for the decisions made at the COP26 summit in Glasgow. Come guide their thoughts, cover their actions, and renew their minds. Protect them from the influence of the realms of darkness and sweep away all corruption. We pray that you would lay out new paths of righteousness in troubled nations and lands. Father, it is disturbing to see the difference between rich and poor widening. We lift those in poverty to you. Come, bring miracles of provision, healing and restoration. Speak into our lives so that we might play our part in changing the world. Amen. Amen. We give you our worries and concerns and we ask for your guidance. You see it all, the outer circumstances and the inner turmoils. We know that you understand our lives, that sometimes our hearts weigh heavy with trouble. Right now we lay all these things before you. We breathe in, safe in the knowledge that, you, that we are held by grace. We breathe out, knowing that we are held secure in your arms and we wait on you. For you are all truth, you are overflowing love. You are a beacon of hope and a fortress of faith. Lord, we choose to be attentive to your voice. May we be alert to your spirit's guiding as we journey onwards with you. We love you, Father. Amen. Now the final blessing. <coughs> May the God of peace, who raised Christ from the dead, strengthen your inner being for every good work. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit rest upon you, dwell within you, this day and evermore. Amen. <laughs>